Ask about Raylar and learn how AbbVie could help you save. The L.A. Travel and Adventure Show is back. Discover thousands of vacation options, meet the top travel experts from around the world, and plan your next trip. Two days only, February 18th and 19th at the L.A. Convention Center. Buy discounted tickets now at TravelShows.com. That's TravelShows.com. I'm so excited for people to try our new meatball sandwich. Savory meatballs with melted Swiss cheese and zesty marinara sauce. Mobile order for Valentino? <laughs> Grazie. Enjoy a taste of Italy with our new meatball sandwich at Wienerschnitzel. Joining us in studio, celebrity trainer Ben Bruno shares his six-week fitness training app Monday at 9 a.m. on the KTLA 5 Morning News. Now at 10, widespread devastation and loss in Turkey and Syria following the massive 7.8 earthquake. But could it happen here? Why some ex experts are worried about Southern California buildings. Fire in the skies over Alaska as the U.S. shoots down a second object soaring over American airspace. But this one, not the same balloon we saw last week. So what is it? All right, Eagles or Chiefs? People are placing their bets coast to coast this weekend ahead of the Super Bowl. Why Americans are doubling down on sports gambling this year. And we are seeing clouds. Yeah. All right, well, we also have in entertainment a Grammy Award nominated country artist dropping his music video on our air for the very first time. Who is it? It's under Hazel. I'll tell you that right now. Stick around. Good morning and welcome to the KTLA Morning News at 10. I'm Pedro Rivera. And I'm Lauren Lister. And this morning we are seeing all of your great Valentine's Day date photos. They range from pals to spouses to we have a dog coming up. And Look we forward. have a date idea for you if you're still looking. We all went on a date. Yeah. A team building A team date. building date. It was fantastic. It was something I thought I wasn't going to be good at. Then it turns out once you do it, I think everyone is going to love it. Because you can be a natural. Like I feel like most people... We'll be good at this. And I found the fun in it to not be necessarily the skill, but just doing this thing that I hadn't done before, this but that I have thought about wanting to do. Yeah. And a little movie reenactment that people might have on their bucket list. Yeah. We've been talking about a lot. Also, Super Bowl, of course, tomorrow yeah. night, uh, which I haven't been feeling the love here in studio, but I will say thank you so much. Okay, time is 10 o'clock. <laughs> we are following developing news that feels like deja vu. The U.S. shooting down yet another high-flying object over American airspace. This morning, recovery operations are underway near Alaska for whatever is left. The unidentified aircraft was spotted Thursday evening off the northern coast of Alaska near the U.S. Canadian border. Pentagon officials say it deemed this aircraft a civilian threat or a threat to civilian flights, which prompted President Biden to authorize shooting it down. White House officials say it was significantly smaller than that Chinese balloon shot down a week ago, and it didn't have maneuver capabilities. It's still unclear just what it was. The death toll from the massive earthquake in Turkey and Syria has now climbed to more than 24,000 people. Rescue workers racing against time to pull survivors from the rubble of the collapsed buildings before it's too late. Meanwhile, the quake serving as a wake up call here for us in California, with some engineers saying the big one could cause just as much destruction if we do not accelerate our efforts to retrofit local buildings. KTLA's Carlos Herrera joins us live from the News Center with the latest on this. Carlos, you've been following it all morning long for us. Hey, good morning, uh, Pedro. You know, despite all those challenges, rescuers in Turkey and in Syria, they're miraculously continuing to pull earthquake survivors out of the rubble. The unlikely rescues coming over four days after that massive quake that brought down thousands of buildings. But the flurry of dramatic rescues does not obscure the devastation spread across the sprawling border region. The catastrophe has killed nearly 24,000 people, injured at least 80,000 others, and left millions homeless in both countries. Entire neighborhoods, for that matter, of high rises have been reduced to rubble. Authorities saying trapped people can live for a week or more, but the odds of finding more survivors are quickly waning. Meantime, engineers are now suggesting that the scale of the devastation in the region was partly due to lax enforcement of building codes. Local seismic engineers saying this should serve as a warning for us here in Southern California. The main culprit in the destruction is inadequate configuration of steel reinforcing bars that allows concrete to become brittle and explode when shaken. 
a design and construction flaw found in concrete buildings that line most of LA's boulevards. In the California, like seen in LA, anything you built prior to mid 1970s, concrete structures, they're dangerous. Kid Miyamoto is a structural engineer from California, currently assisting on the ground in Turkey. He says the damage from a similar 7.8 quake here could cause about 30 percent of our older concrete buildings to fully or partly collapse. About 4 percent of all of our buildings could be impacted in some type of way. He says many of our older buildings have not been evaluated or retrofitted. Most local governments don't even require that. Only L.A., Santa Monica, and West Hollywood have, but the deadline is decades away. In L.A., it's actually scheduled for the 2040s. The problem is the, um, it's 20-some years to actually com confirm to that, you know. And as you know, the uh, uh, USGS forecast, the uh, next 30 years, the probability of a major earthquake in Southern California is 70 percent or higher. Doesn't mean it's going to happen 30 years from now, by the way. It could be today. So it's definitely the, uh, we have to do something much quicker. And Miyamoto says the inaction from politicians will end up costing lives in all of California, especially because our state hasn't been tested with a massive 7.8 quake in more than a century. The last one was in 1906, which destroyed much of San Francisco, Lauren. We all remember that one. Carlos, thank you. California wildfires may now be widening the gap between the rich and the poor when it comes to housing. Experts call it the fire driven gentrification, a new trend, especially visible in the wake of the 2017 Tubbs fire in Napa County. Many victims of that fire have been forced to leave the area because they lack fire insurance and it's too expensive to expensive to repair their homes and those that can't afford to stay. They tend to be much wealthier. The trend now further sorting communities across the state by in income and affluence. An update to a wild story we've been following out of Mission Viejo. A woman believed to be under the influence of drugs has been arrested after purposely running into several parked cars in Orange County.